Good morning creators and welcome to another UFN tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to get the real-time inverse. Now, this is the trick I found last week and posted on Twitter. Got a lot of buzz and uh, I think it's time to just expose the secrets of it. Um, I'm surprised we haven't gotten an official function for it yet, but this system works very well. Um, even if you change your time on your local computer, it will display so, but it will only get the um, get the right time from the verse server, which will always be the present date and present time in UTC time zone. Throughout this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to access the time. Um, there's a lot of applications you can create for this from idle, um, idle rewards to scheduling events to recurring events. Um, but I'm just gonna give you the basics of how to access this and a little API that you can use in your projects. So if you innovate on this concept, create any awesome mechanics with this, please share it on Twitter, tag me. I would like to see them. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so you're in your UFN. Open up your content drawer. I already created a file for called uh, real time for this. Um, so the trick behind this whole fiasco is the um, control rig. So you can go to animation, control rig, and create a control rig. Now you don't actually need a parent rig for this. You're just going to create this and I'm going to call this the real time control rig. All right, open that up. So right now it's empty. It's not doing anything. You're going to go to the right side or left side here. Uh, you're going to hit new control. Um, you're going to rename this to the um, time control like so. You're going to drag it out here. You're going to do set control. And you're also going to get the now node. So this is the trick. Uh, right click and add the now node. This is what gets you the year, month, day, hours, minutes, and seconds, which is really, really useful. Um, now to apply this, we're going to use vectors. So we're going to make a vector. Make a vector. And so we're going to attach the year to the X, the month to the Y, and the day to the Z. We're gonna make another vector as well. And we're gonna attach the hours there, the minutes there, and the seconds there. All right. And just so that we don't have to deal with any zero scale issues, we're gonna add a vector. And we're just gonna set these to one. Like so. And then in our set transform, we're gonna attach the minutes, hours, minutes, and seconds to the scale and then the year, month, day to the translation. And we're gonna set the uh, forward solve into execute content. And that is all set up and good. You'll actually see if you click on here, that it is actively changing the transform of our, uh, of our control. So you're done with the rig. Next thing you wanna do is create a prop to handle it. So we're gonna create a blueprint class, building prop, we call this the real time prop like so double click to open it up and you're going to add a control rig like so and so our control rig class is going to be our real time control rig all right so in your editor you want to place down your real time prop you're going to set the origin to the or the location to the origin um that way it doesn't mess up the rig. If it's not the origin, it could mess up your um, locations and that could screw up your time device. We're gonna create a basic prop just so that we can manipulate it. Be building prop and we'll call this just empty prop. We'll drag it out. The only thing you need to change here is movable. Movable means that it can be updated during the game. Um, if it's static or stationary, it will not update during the game and therefore you will not be at getting the real time in your map. Um, so now you can open up your real time prop and your control rig, and you're going to use a user defined element. So user defined elements are a really unique thing in blueprints, uh, and actually very useful for control rig in UEFN, um, because it enables you to affect or let things in the scene affect, uh, the rig. So just a brief explanation of how this works. You have a reference actor. And that could be like something within the blueprint or it could just be something within the scene. Right now we're using something within the scene. So there's no name uh, to the component. We're just gonna use the reference actor empty prop. 
Our element type is going to be control. We only have a control in our rig, so it's going to be the only control in our rig. The element name, of course, is time control. And output means that it's going to be affecting our reference actor or our component reference. Um, if it's on input mode, that means the component reference is going to be affecting the control, which means that the empty prop can control our um, control. Um, so you can kind of see how this is very useful for um, you know controlling a rig in in the editor in game with verse etc um so that's just a brief introduction to control rig if you want to dive deeper into that i might make more tutorials down the road but now you can open up your empty prop and you'll see that it is being positioned at the right year um year month day hour minute and second i uh, remember the hours minutes and seconds are have one added to their values so uh we'll have to deal with that in verse. So in verse, I'm going to create a new file. We're going to call this the real time API. Since I already have one called this, I'm going to call it real time API two. Uh, create empty. All right, double click to open it up. Okay, so in here, we're going to use three libraries. It's going to be versa.org slash simulation, as well as the um, fortnite.com slash devices. And Unreal Engine dot com slash temporary slash spatial math. All right. So we're going to create a class just to store time. This is going to be called the time and date will be a class that is persistible, which means you can store it in persistent cases. So like if you want to store the last time the player was in the map, it's persistible. You ne it needs to be final in order to access persistence and it needs to be concrete so that you can edit it in the, um, in like a device or something. Um, so we'll have an editable, we'll call this years. It's gonna be an integer and we're gonna set it to negative one. Since it's negative one, we'll know that if it's an invalid class because it hasn't been set. So um, that's pretty useful. Months, also negative one. We have days, of course. And um, hours. Minutes. And of course, seconds. We're going to create a function just to print this so we're going to call it prints it's going to return nothing it's just going to print um year uh not years first we're going to do since i'm american i do months first months days years we're going to do backslash n for a new line and we're going to do hours colon uh minutes colon seconds like so and quotation mark so this gets a little bit annoying just having to like define this class a million times so we're going to create a little bit of a constructor function we'll call it the make time and date and our parameters are going to be years of type int months uh, days hours minutes and seconds it's going to return a time and date. And then we're going to create it here. So return time and dates. Where of course years is paired up with our input years. Months is paired up with months. Days to days. Uh, hours to hours. Minutes to minutes and seconds to seconds. Now this is going to be very useful since a persistible class cannot have variables. You have to create a new instance of the um, time and date anytime you want to change it. So having a, a constructor function like this is very useful. Um, we also need to make a function to derive the time and date from a prop. So we're going to make this the make time and date. We'll have a creative prop as our input. 
and we'll return a time and date. So uh, we're going to get our transform prop dot get transform. And at the end, we're just going to return um, just a time and date that is invalid, just in case what we are about to do doesn't work. So since the transform is a bunch of floats, it has decimal points. We don't want that. We want integers. So we're going to use a int function to get these integers. So if we're going to do years is equal to transform.translation.x months is equal to transform.translation.y. Uh, we need to use the int function. So let me add that here. Int with square brackets because that's why uh, that's why we have an if block by the way because it integer is a conditional. Um, Days is also int transform dot translation dot z. Then we have hours as int transform dot scale dot x um, minutes is equal to int dot transform dot scale dot y. And um, of course we have seconds is int transform dot scale dot z. Now, since we have these offset by one in our rig, we want to subtract one so that we have the accurate time. And we're actually gonna test that in game to make sure that <laughs> real quick, I realized I did a stupid and I did not actually make a uh, return here. So we're, we're gonna return, uh, make time and date. And we'll use these parameters, so years, We'll do months, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. That's correct. Um, so we're gonna create a class just to read this. We'll call this the testing time device. So we'll do class creative device. And we'll have an at editable prop of type creative prop equal to creative prop like so. Uh, we'll have a button so we can activate it whenever we want. So button device, button device. We're gonna have our on begin function to uh, read this. We'll ride suspense void uh, button dot interactive with events. subscribe we'll call this read time create the function down here read time uh, it's gonna have an agent as a parameter doesn't matter uh, void and we're going to read the time from the prop so we're gonna get the make time and date and we'll use the prop as our input we're gonna store that in a variable called TAD and we're gonna do tad.print so that we can read uh, what it just read. We're gonna drop out our testing time class. We're gonna select our uh, empty prop as our prop to read. We're going to go into our devices and pull out a button so we can activate it. Drop it right here, raise it a little bit and we can put it into our button. And now we can launch session. All right, so that's the time on our log. And you'll see the date is May 21st, 2024. That's correct. Uh, the hour is 1846 uh, with seven seconds. And, you know, on my phone, it says 146. So I'm like, huh, that's off. Well, it always gets it in UTC time in verse. Uh, and I'm not currently in UTC time, but it, that is the correct time in UTC time. So the function works and that's basically all it is. Um, like I said, there's a lot of applications you can use this for from idling um, to creating, you know, a tracker for 
maybe the last time the player was in the map and showing them uh, the patch notes of what they've missed. Um, you can make live events. You can make reoccurring events. Um, there's really many, many applications you can use just as long as you can create the functions for it. Now, there might be more videos to create down the road. So if any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Um, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe. It took me like a lot of tries to get this to work because I'm rusty from making tutorials, but I will be getting into tutorials a lot more in the future. And um, I just hope you have a great day and good luck creating.